Okay, for that's individual practice, another large part of a musician's time is spent in large ensembles or small ensembles. But for large ensembles, you should be doing a lot of listening. There's a bit of watching, you know, watching the conductor, uh, watching everyone around you for when they're coming in to make sure that you don't, you know, you yourself don't come in late. But a lot of your time should be listening. You should be listening to first chair. Uh, his playing will, sh will show you how you should be shaping and putting dynamics into your, uh, your playing. Um, you should be listening to the conductor when he's explaining stuff. Even if it's not to your section, it's a good idea to still listen. Um, you can ignore it if it's you know, fingers or something. That's not going to help you all very much. But if he's talking about how to shape a passage, maybe you can apply that ideas, those ideas to your stuff, your passages. You should also try to listen to a different instrument every single time you uh, play play a passage with a large ensemble. Um, this has two points. One, it'll keep you interested. You know, if you're always doing something, you don't get as bored as quickly. Um, the other thing it'll do is help you understand how to put everything together. So if you know what the clarinets and the trombones and the tubas are doing, you can fit your music into the larger ensemble better. It's a, it's a big puzzle piece how everything fits together. And if you know what everyone around you shape looks like, you can fit yourself into it perfectly. Um, for smaller ensembles, because, you know, there's quartets and duos and trios and blah, there's less listening and more watching. Um, because there's no conductor, you need to watch the people around you for when to come in. So, especially when you very first start, that first opening measure or note, usually there's someone like the flute oboe who's going to breathe and, you know, shake their head and tell you exactly when the first beat is. Um, if you do this, you won't come in late ever. The listening part of it is you want to listen to everyone around you because since there's no first chair and there's no conductor, to figure out where you want to shape, how you want to shape it and put dynamics into it, you want to listen to everyone around you. Especially with the smaller, it's easier to do this. But knowing what everyone else around you, just like the large ensemble, is going to be better. But it's a whole lot more important for smaller ensembles. And for both small and large ensembles, make sure that you don't get too frustrated with people. people. Every instrument is different. Every instrument requires a different skill level. Every person has a different skill level. Sometimes people are just having a bad day. Anything. Don't get frustrated with them. Someday it may be you who, you know, there's a passage you just can't do. You don't, you're not good enough at your instrument yet to play it. Or you haven't practiced it enough. Or you're just having a bad day and it's just nothing's coming out. So just don't get frustrated. It's bad musicianship. You, you'll, you'll start dis disliking what you're doing more. That's really it for practicing. Practicing, you always, you always should be practice practicing. You know, you always be improving practicing. But you know, that's it for you know short little tidbits to help you out. I hope you all are finding fun things to do during this extra long and cooped up summer vacation. Um, toodles.